Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Uh, I already recorded this episode today, but then the video was laggy. So I am sad. But in the last episode, we made this. A, a little player controller where you can jump around, do all sorts of things. And yeah, uh, today I thought I might want to expand on it, make a really quick video uh, on how to expand one of these to have jump, uh, crouching, and sprinting. Let's get into it. But before we get into it, uh, please go down to the bottom of the video and subscribe and hit the like button. It really helps us out. We just reached 50. We're on the way to 100. Cool. So in our script, uh, we're going to make sprinting first. Sprinting's easy. Uh, first thing we're going to do is change the speed to current speed. And I'll, I'll explain that in a second. And then down here, when we apply the speed to our X and Y, let's also, instead of multiply that by speed, because we change speed to current speed, we're going to change it to current speed. Cool. Now, the reason why we're doing current speed is when we sprint, instead of having to have two sets of um, input to get, get access, we'll only need to have one, and we'll just change the current speed rather than uh, if this, then we have these two and then if not then we have another these two so next to current speed we're also going to be making public float called jog speed and or default speed and another float called sprint speed uh you might you can guess what that is anyway down here we're going to and then uh also actually we're going to be making a public camera variable because we're going to be wanting to change a our um field of view and we're going to be calling this player cam uh we can also be making a public float called fov uh or default fov and then a public float called uh sprinting or sprint fov then we're also going to be making a public float called fov change speed cool so down here, we're going to be checking if we are sprinting. So we can, below the is ground, or and above the uh, input to access, we can go if input dot input dot get key. Uh, now, we could go key code dot something, but instead here, we're actually going to be making another variable, and this is going to be public key code, and this is going to be called the sprint key code. And this is a Unity Inspector like, available uh, variable which you can change to be any key on your keyboard. It's really helpful. Um, you can also change it probably via another script or like an options menu, which is really helpful. And then while we're also here, we're also going to be making a public key code, crouch key code. And also while we're at it, we can also make another one um, called jump key code not like you'll want to change it from jump anyway but down here instead of key code dot space we can just call it the jump key code amazing so when we get key here we could go get key sprint uh sprint key code and then we can change our speed and all that kind of stuff cool so let's make an if statement not an if statement i've already done that <laughs> um we are going to first of all set our current speed to our sprint speed so our current speed is equal to sprint speed else our current speed is equal to our jog speed um and then what we're also going to be doing is changing the fov now so we can go player cam dot fov oh so it's not fov sorry field of view Set that equal to mathf.lerp, and we're going to be lerping between values. We can lerp between the player cam dot field of view and our uh, sprinting if our fov and our time uh, variable. Our time and our in the lerp alert method is going to be method. I don't know if that's right. Met lerp line, and we're going to be using the FOV change speed. Awesome. And we're going to be copy and pasting this down into our else, uh, where we're going to be changing it to the jog FOV. Awesome. 
So now this is going to be changing. We can actually double check that this is going to work. Oh, jog FOV doesn't. What did I name it? Default FOV, didn't I? Because it's not just for jogging. It's also when you are walking. Default FOV. Ah. Spelled default incorrectly up there. Interesting. Cool, so now we have a bunch of things we can deal with. Uh, our jog speed is going to be, you know, 3, sprint speed going to be 5. Our current speed is also going to be 3, just start us off like that. Input our player camera. Player camera. Our default FFV is going to be 60, our sprint is going to be 70. Our FFV change speed is going to be about 7. And our sprint key code is going to be left shift. And uh, this, this takes a while, you have to kind of go down. There's no scrolling system. Which is annoying. <laughs> Here we go, left shift. Our crouch key is going to be left control, which is all the way down there. Cool, left control. And our jump key is going to be space, which is up top. Awesome. So so now if we click play, as you can see, when we do that, it's gonna, it's very snappy, um, and, you know, <laughs> you might not want that to be so snappy. So, uh, in your thing, instead of cha doing it by a change speed, we're also gonna be multiplying by time dot delta time. to go back to an inspector and make sure this works now now if we click play as you can see it changes nice and smoothly and we get that really nice field of view change which kind of honestly a very it, things like this very much increase the quality of your game make them look a lot better cool so now let's add crouching crouching is actually very easy and the way we're going to be doing crouching is we're going to be scaling the player now if uh, you would be using animation, you wouldn't be doing this, and you would be doing something more along the lines of an animation instead, and then scaling the collider, which is on the character controller, and then uh, centering it down, and all that kind of stuff, or you might have a custom collider on your, on your player as well, uh, but that's all for the future. Let's also fix this up. Cool, so below the sprint we can get another if statement, and this time it's going to be input.getKey, and it's going to be the crouch key code. And then we're going to open a close curly brace, and we're going to be going... Now this is this is where we're going to have to do some stuff, we're also going to be creating our statement. Cool. Here, up, up at the top we're going to be making public float called player width. A public float called uh, default player height and another public float called crouch player height and we're also going to be going a public float called crouch speed cool so and now when we get this we're going to be also, we're going to be making sure that we're grounded when we crouch. So, then inside here, we can pretty much change our scale. So, we can then, um, up here again, sorry, we're going to be making a public float called current height, or current player height. Then down in the if statement, we can go current player height is equal to math if dot lerp between current player height and crouch height. And with the time value as the crouching crouch speed. And we're going to multiply that by time dot delta time. Cool. And we can do the same thing down below in the else. Uh, but instead of the crouch player height, we're going to be doing the default player height, 
Now, how do we assign this essentially? What we can do is we can go play root dot local scale is equal to a new vector three. And here we can input the player width, the current player height, and the player width. And we could do the same thing in the else. Now, to prevent our character from jumping while crouching, you might want that, so this is really unnecessary. Personally, I don't like the idea of uh, jumping while crouching, but we can just check uh, if we're crouching. Now, the way we do this is we create a public bool up here. So we make a public bool, and we're going to call this crouching. Now, in our if statement, where we get the crouching, we can go crouching. We can set crouching to true uh and in the else we can go crouching is equal to false now down here into where we jump we can go and and crouching is equal equal to false now remember that this is completely unnecessary you don't need to it's just it's just a suggestion cool so now we can assign more values so player width is one uh, current player height is 1, deeper player height is 1, crouch player height would be about 0.5, and the crouch speed would probably be 2 or 3. So now if we go play, we're going to drag our scene view down here, so we can view it while we're playing. And as you can see, when we click our control key, we crouch. And it's very simple, very basic, uh, but it works. So a little bit of thing you can do, to make sure this does work properly um, and scales the collider is make something that you can go under so as you're going to see here if we if we go under here <laughs> you know we're able to go under which is pretty cool but if we, but you can't if we run into it we can't uh, now as you can see we're actually glitched into the block um, we can change it we can fix this with raycasting uh, so let's let's do that real quick so in here, uh, let me just reboot that scene because I forgot it doesn't save. Oh, now we have something to crouch under. Let's just make sure we can make it. Yep, and as you can see, we definitely can. Cool, so we're actually going to... Re by the way, really handy if you sort all these. Uh, it's going to make it a lot easier. Uh, but we're going to be making a raycast again. Cool. So up at the top, we can make go onto another line. And we can go make a raycast hit. And we're going to be calling this roof hit. And then we're going to be making a uh, <laughs> another bull I know confusing we're going to be making another bull can uncrouch yep <laughs> and we're going to be checking can uncrouch is equal to physics.raycast and we're going to be doing it from the head so we're going to be getting a few more things we're going to be making a public uh transform and we're going to be calling this uh, head. We're going to be making a public a public float called roof check distance. And then we'll just be using the ground layer. Well, actually, we'll be actually no. We'll be we'll be using the ground layer, but we'll make another player public mail layer mask player mask. No, and we're going to be calling it uh, roof. What is roof? And then down here we can check uh, the head head dot position head dot transform direction vector three dot up out the roof hit and we're going to be doing the roof check distance 
and we're going to be filtering through the what is roof now uh we can also down here the way we do this is we just go else if can uncrouch is equal equal to true cool so now if we click if we don't click play we go back to the inspector if we save and go back to the inspector we have again a few more values let's quickly change them so in our player we're gonna in our player body we're gonna be creating another one and this is gonna be called the head and we're gonna be posi positioning this right at the top so at one uh and we're gonna be setting that in here so the head roof check distance set that as something like um 0.5 <laughs> it's gonna be the change what is roof and we're gonna be using the ground and let's just make sure that when we scale this the head stays up at the top perfect and now let's see the magic happen <laughs> so now if we go down can uncrouch is equal to yes so that is wrong um and as you can see if we go there it's gonna uncrouch so how do we make it the re it reverses the uncrouch so all we have to do here is put in a exclamation mark there and it reverses it yeah pretty easy cool so now if we play and we do this as you can see we can uncrouch but as soon as we go into here it's gonna stop us from crouching until we come out of here perfect and as you can see, we've made a full, pretty much a full game controller. All we need now is health and a, you know, health bar, UI, and all that kind of stuff, which we'll be covering in the next video coming out soon. Uh, <laughs> anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you dudes later.